On this episode of Doing the Most, we're going to take a look at a little product you've probably seen on social media ads. Bruzy. What is it? Does it work? And is it worth the price? Moment bruise and various artists, everything from meat to roast. Big creation, fermentation, and ebriation, doing the most. Bruzy. If you're a home brewer and you are on social media, you have probably seen Bruzy's social media ads. Particularly, they blanket Facebook with tons of ads trying to drive traffic toward their product. So what is it? It's a little packet with a bunch of powders in it that can turn any juice into wine in just five short days. And according to their marketing hype, it is combining ingredients to replicate the process of natural wineries all around the world. That's right, natural wineries all around the world. You can do this process right in your very own home. The ads are everywhere. You've probably seen them, even if you've just seen screenshots of them shared because they are incredibly pervasive. And most often their ads seem to be targeted toward gift giving, giving away Bruzy as a gift to someone you love who has been wanting to homebrew but just hasn't made that break yet. They're designed to be easy, it's one shot, it takes 15 minutes to mix up, you pour the packet in, a few days later you've got wine, cider, or mead, and they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee which means that if it's a gift, they're most likely not to have to make good on that satisfaction guarantee. But there are definitely a lot of people who have bought Bruzy for themselves. And the question is, does it work? Which we'll get to in a little bit, but also, is it worth the price that you pay? One of the benefits that comes along with your Bruzy purchase is access into one of their private Facebook groups, of which they seem to have several, like, two or three, I think. And fortunately, I have some colleagues on the inside that could send me some interesting screenshots from the activity happening in one of those Facebook groups. There is, of course, a mixed bag of advice happening in this Facebook group, including a few more interesting posts. Like on this one, Bruzy claims that there's no real cap for how much honey you can put in a gallon and a half batch of mead. And this person saying that, of course, nothing needs to be sanitized unless you're going to be putting your brew into bottles. There's this person who believes that mold only grows when your brew gets too warm. And one of the seemingly more common pieces of advice is that you have to rack a minimum of four times before you can safely bottle without having bottle bombs. It's interesting because it seems to be mostly beginners helping other beginners without a whole lot of intervention from Bruzy itself. And unfortunately, we all know that that's a recipe for failed brews, mold infections, all those common beginner mistakes, because it's important for beginners to have somebody at the intermediate or advanced level helping them out, giving them tips, and answering those important questions. I had a lot of help from homebrew talk and winemaking talk forums when I was first starting, as well as r slash homebrewing on Reddit. It's just, it's important. It's like a mentorship type situation. And in this group in particular, it seems like it's just beginners mentoring other beginners, which unfortunately is always a recipe for disaster or discouragement. There are also a lot of interesting claims on their website. Of course, we'll go through a few of those in this video. And one of the most interesting seems to be this natural equals healthy and bruisey equals natural equivalency that is kind of threaded throughout all the marketing lingo on their website. One of my favorite pages, which is actually their homepage, has this one where it talks about how along the way they ditched the 13 gross preservatives and chemicals found in most commercial wines. <laughs> it would be nice if they named those 13 ingredients and differentiated how the six laboratory developed things that they have in their packet somehow differ or are more healthy or more natural than these things that they don't name. But there's a lot of that going on on Bruzy's website. However, there are also areas where they're very transparent. So I think we should take a look at it and explore a little deeper. First off, it's important to just know what Bruzy is, and I think the best way to do that would be to take a look at their shop. So they've got a welcome kit, a winemaker's bundle, you can make a Chardonnay if you want, and a bunch of other stuff, glassware, accessories. <laughs> they've got a fining agent that apparently helps prevent oxidation. So let's take a look at the basic welcome kit. That's the thing that most people are going to see when they're first introduced to Bruzy. 
What is in here? It is not listed at the top. Aha! I have to scroll down about halfway through the page to find out what's in the welcome kit. It says that it's everything you need to make 18 bottles of wine and more. I'm presuming that means and more stuff other than wine, like cider or mead, not more than 18 bottles. Comes with three bruisey bags, three airlocks, an amazing winemaking book, some stickers, and other stuff. So really what you're paying for here is the three packets and the three airlocks. Those are what are really clutch to making this bruisey system work. But how do you buy just the packets? Okay, so you can buy three bruisey bags for what appears to be on sale for $14.99 right now. So we're gonna go with $14.99 as our cost because it's probably one of those things where it's like always on sale. So that's like five bucks a pack. And it looks like at least where I am, there's free shipping. So there's that. Okay, let's take a look at how it works. Bruzy is powered by science. I like that. For the first time, anyone can harness the exact same process used in natural wineries across the world at home using the same ingredients. Natural wineries, eh? The topic of natural wineries is one of a little bit of debate in the wine community. Because natural kind of is just whatever the winery decides that it is. And I'm not an expert on this, so I decided to call someone who is. My friend Tony, who is very knowledgeable about wine, and I wanted to pick his brain a little bit about what natural winemaking means within the winemaking community. So I've been in the wine and uh, the wine and liquor industry for quite some time. I've taken several certification, pro gone through several set of certification programs. I've done a lot of extensive study about Burgundy and uh, other other wine regions as well. But the end goal for me is to do the master of wine program. For the first time, anyone can harness the exact same process used in natural wineries across the world. Wine is unique, a, a unique alcoholic beverage because it it actually can be found in, in nature to a certain degree. Um, you could take grapes, put them in a jar, put a lid on the jar and wait three to five days and you'll have wine. Um, a lot of times brands, and this is not true for everything, but a lot of times brands that label themselves as natural wines a better term for that would be minimally invasive wines. Mm, um, mm -hmm. They're really not doing anything. They're just gr taking the grapes, harvesting them, and doing little to no management. What this product ultimately is trying to do is help you make something that isn't going to be totally wretched. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and because it's just really hard to do it this way, um, you know, without some sort of assistance, especially if you don't have a lot of experience. They talk about the natural wineries of the world. Is there a an established standard or, I don't know, consortium that agrees upon on this This is what natural winemaking is? Is that is that a designation? No, it's not. Um, and that's kind of why this is so difficult to explain to people who are either just getting into wine or they hear that buzzword because that's ultimately what it is so this is a buzzword those wineries like like the ones those bottles that you have there they're not adding bentonite or ph buffers or no. cultured yeast or bacteria they're just they're letting the grapes and whatever microbes are on the grapes do the work yep 100 percent. you know i'm sure they have to make some very small adjustments to make sure that things don't go totally awry or just spoil in the bottle, you know, mm -hmm. um, things like that. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, though, they're not really doing anything. I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, what you're going to be drinking is grape juice. And so for the, the claim for this product to be that you can use the same ingredients as natural wineries around the world um, seems to be a bit misleading. <laughs> So obviously when they talk about natural winemaking, they're doing a little bit of buzzwording there. But let's take a look a little bit deeper on how this thing works. Mm -hmm. 
says they spent tens of thousands of dollars reverse engineering what makes amazing natural wine and blended together six previously inaccessible winemaking ingredients to make each magical bruisey bag. Wow, previously inaccessible. I'm excited to see what those are. Fortunately, they're incredibly transparent about what is in the pack. So let's take a look at the ingredients. One, an amazing wine yeast. We start with an industry exclusive wine yeast, notable for its vigorous character, floral notes, and super fast speeds. This is probably something like K1V1116 because it's aggressive and it has floral notes. It is a little bit temperature sensitive, but I think with the other stuff in here, they might be able to make that yeast work, but it's probably something in that kind of family of yeast strains. Two, organic micronutrients. They have a dual nutrient system of two patented organic blends. I wonder if Bruzy owns the patent on that or if just they're patented by someone. One helps our yeast rehydrate and the other helps them stay energized afterwards. So this is probably something in that family of ingredients like Go Firm Protect and Fermate O. There are other industrial nutrient blends that are kind of in that same realm. And it sounds like that's precisely the type of thing that that is. Number three, bentonite. I had no idea that bentonite was previously inaccessible to home winemakers. Bentonite is a clarifying agent, a fining agent made from clay that's been used like basically forever in winemaking. Four, potassium bicarbonate. This is just a pH buffer to help uh, reduce the acidity just a little bit. And five, malolactic fermentation culture. Malolactic fermentation culture is a bacteria that converts malic acid into lactic acid. For some types of fermentation, this could take the edge off a little bit, but that requires that your wine has malic acid in it to start with. And there are some high malic acid fruits, and there are some that have basically none or maybe none at all. And so in a lot of ways, this culture is not gonna be beneficial for a lot of different types of wine that the home winemaker is gonna be making from grocery store ingredients. And also interesting to note about malolactic fermentation culture, if you are the type of brewer that wants to stabilize your stuff with potassium sorbate, you can't add that while the culture is active because it will create geranium type off flavors. And so I guess Bruzy is probably a little bit crossing their fingers that you're not going to be stabilizing your stuff because uh, you would definitely run into that problem if you have active culture going in your wine. All right, let's see if we can make this at home. First, let's start with our yeast. We're going to go with K1V1116 here because I figure that's probably what it is. Can I buy this by the pound? All right, so our yeast is $35.95 for 500 doses, which gets us to about seven cents per dose for a gallon batch. We're presuming that GoFirm and Fermate O are the nutrients that are in there or something in that family. Get 68 doses of Fermate O for 49 cents, 36 doses of GoFirm for also 49 cents. There's your nutrient. All right, bentonite, previously inaccessible to the home winemaker. Looks like Homebrew Ohio has it readily available for $11.90 a pound. That gets us about 151 doses for an average per gallon cost of eight cents. Potassium bicarbonate. This is not something I've ever used, nor would I have ever thought to use. Looks like that's about 8.99 for 133 doses, which gets us an average per gallon of seven cents. And I'm just kind of estimating quantity based on the manufacturer here, because I have no idea how to use this. Now the fun one, finding a dry malolactic fermentation culture in bulk. Okay, looks like more wine has it, and we're looking at about 19.99 for 66 doses. That gets us to about 30 cents per gallon batch. So that brings us to a grand total of $1.50 for a one gallon batch. And Bruzy recommends doing their batches at one and a half gallons per packet. So you're looking at about $2.25 for the amount that they send you, which is about 45% of what Bruzy charges. But I think there's a better way. I would definitely remove the MLF culture. There are way too many potential issues with that, including that MLF culture typically takes a lot longer than yeast to do its fermentation process 
four weeks, six weeks, sometimes up to eight weeks or more. And so that's going to, for some things like a cider, potentially draw out your aging time from yeast pitch. I cut that entirely and then go in and substitute our yeast for 71B. 71B does a maloethanolic fermentation, so it converts some of the malic acid into ethanol. So that's gonna take some of that acidic edge off that you're probably looking to shave off of your wine and it reduces the cost because you're getting rid of that MLF culture. I would keep the nutrients, I'd keep the bentonite. I think for beginners, it's great to have that in there. Uh, the potassium bicarbonate, get rid of that. There's no reason for that to be in there. You're not really gaining anything, especially since Bruzy says they only throw a pinch in there anyway. So that gets us to $1.13 for a gallon batch or a buck 70 for a one and a half gallon batch, which is 34% of what Bruzy charges. And I'll put up here for you our recipe for this very close approximation for what Bruzy offers. Go ahead and screenshot that. Or here is our other recommendation that will cut your cost a little bit more and I think give you a pretty close experience to what you're getting from the Bruzy packet for 34% of what you would pay them at their sale price. So do their claims live up to their hype? Well, for one, it's kind of difficult to find out via YouTube or just like general social media traffic because they do have an affiliate program. And so when you're looking for posts or videos about Bruzy, a lot of times you come across something that's got an affiliate link and therefore that person is being paid to tell you that Bruzy is good. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with affiliate marketing. I do a little bit of that with the channel and I have no qualms about folks making a little supplemental income online. But I wasn't gonna hand over money to Bruzy to try it out myself, mostly because I believe that what's in there works. I believe that they have kind of a catch-all solution for the very, very beginner brewer. But to cover our bases, let's take a look at their website's online reviews. Okay, let's look at the reviews on their beginner kit. One star, love Bruzy. One star, absolutely love my new Bruzy habit. One star, tastes great. One, st one star, this sh uh -huh. They have no two or three star reviews. Four stars, love the product, had a blast experimenting. Not bad. Not bad, but I haven't perfected it yet. This is pretty good. Having fun learning. Wine, yes, cider, not so much. The cider, well, it was undrinkable. The flavor was almost rancid. We bought a gallon of good local cider, followed the directions as suggested. It was a waste of good juice and the yeast packets because they aren't cheap. That's probably because there's an MLF culture in there. That malolactic culture and all that malic acid in cider, I don't care what people say, what people claim, that's gonna take some time. And this is probably the type of thing that if you just put it in the closet and forgot about it for a year, came back to it, it's probably gonna be pretty drinkable. Gonna be really smooth. Not bad, I'm impressed, good customer service, incredibly fun, amazing product, okay. So yeah, these people seem happy with it. They seem like they're having a good time for the most part other than the cider maker and that one person. Uh -huh. And so, like I said, Brucey is probably doing for the most part what it claims. It's probably fermenting within five days or so up to 15% alcohol. Now it may not be drinkable at that point, but I'm sure in most cases it's probably living up to the promise of a five day ferment. But Brucey does do kind of an interesting job of trying to minimize public opinions about their product. For one, all their Facebook groups are private. They don't really post on their social media other than delivering social media ads, which they heavily moderate. And there have definitely been some interesting interactions on their social media because they have a preference for responding to inquiries privately instead of letting the public see what it is they say to the person commenting. And I don't know this for a fact, but there does appear to be some definite heavy comment deletion because there are certain posts where you would think a company with this many likes would have a lot of engagement and the engagement numbers seem a little bit off, at least for somebody who has a social media marketing background. And I don't have a lot of experience interacting with their social media team myself, but I have a colleague and friend who does. And so I decided to call him up 
and ask him about his experience. So probably around two-ish years ago, I started uh, learning how to how to uh, homebrew, joining new groups and stuff like that. The algorithm started feeding me bruzy, and I'm like, okay, it, that's a little weird. And mm-hmm. I was like, um, this is too good to be true. And then I saw the price. I'm like, oh yeah, that's just way expensive. So, yeah. but. The more I got into homebrewing, the more I started seeing these. They, they like just inundated me with uh, with their advertisements, and then so I'm like, "Well, okay, I'll read the comments because I want like because in my head I'm like, okay, who is this for? People were asking questions and no one was answering them. So you know, I I started it started out slow. I was you know bringing a question here and there. They're like, well, how do I get started then? So I started posting links to <laughs> to nutrients yeah. and finer yeast. They started uh, refuting me. Like like they first they started uh, like just refuting uh, my links saying oh those those products don't do what our product does and so i would write back okay what exactly does your product do that these products don't do Mm -hmm. and they couldn't give me an answer and then they started deleting everything that i i'd write like if it was just a simple question a simple answer that got deleted every, every time i posted something it got deleted and then I started noticing that it was going through, but it was like just gray on my end. Hmm. So it's like, I'm pretty certain they shadow banned me. Now, I don't blame any company for moderating their social media presence. It's their prerogative, but it does really seem like they're trying to keep people from realizing that they probably have a local homebrew shop where they could be getting their supplies. So the final question, is it a value? I mean, sure, if you're brewing two or three times a year and you don't want to stockpile on yeast and nutrient and clarifiers and pH buffers, then sure, it's probably a decent value even if you're paying that full price of $25 for three packs because you're not having to buy all the stuff in bulk and store it and keep track of when it expires and all that. And again, I'm sure that it works because all it is is the same stuff that I teach here on the channel that's been repackaged for the ultra, ultra beginner. And this is a decent business idea. Take all the collective knowledge of the homebrewing community that we've been building up over the last several hundred years and definitely scientifically over the last 10 to 15 years and put it in a cute little package with slick branding and sell it to people who don't really know better. That's fine. It's a great introduction for new homebrewers to ease themselves into the process. I don't have a problem with anybody making money on that. However, as we covered previously, there's a much cheaper way to do all this. And once you've made your introduction to homebrewing through Bruzy, it makes a whole lot more sense to go to your local homebrew shop or use online shops like Northern Brewer, Homebrew Ohio, Midwest Supplies to get this stuff at a more reasonable price and to get exactly what you need for your brew, not this kind of catch-all solution that will give you a baseline average kind of brew. So again, here are the two recipes for build your own bruisey packets. This is the one that would probably most closely resemble the packet that you're gonna get directly from Bruzy. And this is the one that I would recommend to cut costs and simplify and probably get a little bit better of a brew. In closing, if you found this video interesting, I hope you will hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications if you haven't already. If you have subscribed already, thank you. We have social media and a Discord channel and all that stuff. You can find it through any of the URLs here on your screen. And I hope you'll join us next week for more homebrewing content here on Doing the Most. Happy brewing and cheers.